guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing my October wrap up. Had a really good reading month in the month of October and I managed to read 10 books. So I'm just going to get into all of the books that I read during the month. So the first thing that I read in October was Elmet by Fiona Mosley. This is one of the Man Booker shortlist books. I have done a full review of this on my channel, which I'll link for you, or I'll talk about my thoughts in a little bit more detail. But I really did enjoy this book and I ended up giving it, I think, four or 4.5 stars. Next up, I finished Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders um, and I gave this five stars. This is my favourite from the shortlist. I'm so, so happy it won. Um, so like, like I said, I've done a full review of this one as well on my channel, so I'll link that for you so you can see my thoughts in a bit more detail. But yeah, this was by far my favourite, really, really enjoyed it, and this one got four, five stars from me. To continue my reread of Harry Potter, I finished Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So I listened to this on audiobook, um, and that's how I've been rereading them this year. I'm enjoying all of them, they're all five star reads for me, I love Harry Potter and I love delving back into the world again, learning new things and um, things I've forgotten from my um, first read of them. So yeah, um, continued on with the fifth one and gave that one five stars. Then I did a buddy read of Dark Matter by Blake Crouch with Krista from Books and Jams. Um, I'll put a link to her channel down below. She's absolutely fantastic. If you're not subscribed to her channel yet, you really should be. But we decided we wanted to read Dark Matter together. We'd had a chat about it in August, I think, um, but hadn't got around to doing it yet. So we decided October was the month when we were going to read this together. Um, all I knew about this going into it was that it was a sci-fi book um, and that uh, some people that I'd listened to talk about it said that um, they were saying good things about it. So um, I thought this was so, so brilliant. It's more like a thriller than it is a sci-fi, maybe like a sci-fi thriller, like a blend of the two genres. Um, but this tells the story of Jason and he has a wife and a son and he is some sort of scientist um, and at the beginning of the book he has sort of made some sacrifices for um, his wife and his son in terms of his career and his wife has made some sacrifices too um, so that they can have this like great sort of family life um, and then sort of something happens at the beginning and I don't want to give anything else away but this was absolutely fantastic really really enjoyed it and um, it was really fast paced it really made you think an awful lot so a lot of thrillers sort of you know they're not I would say this is literary but a lot of thrillers aren't really sort of thought provoking reads this really was it got you to think about the duplic duplicity sorry of life um, it got you to think about all those decisions that you make and kind of how your path can go one way but it can also go another depending on the decisions that you make. Um, yeah, and it was just really, really excellent. I would say if you like thrillers then you would definitely like this. But also if you're somebody who hasn't read a lot of science fiction and is looking for something to get into science fiction a little bit more, again I would really, really recommend this. The science isn't particularly heavy in here. Um, when it's explained, it's it's relatively easy to get your head around, but it's not sort of the crux of the story or anything like that. I, I, I really enjoyed this and I gave this one five stars. Then I uh, bought a copy of Franklin's Fr Flying Bookshop by Jen Campbell. This is her children's book release. I think it came out in September. Um, and I bought a copy of it from her website and she signed it for me. Um, I've done sort of like a review type video of my channel where I talk about this book and the power of reading so I'll put a link to that if you haven't watched that already but I thought it was really really charming I love the illustrations um, and yeah just the perfect children's book uh, great for a present um, and again I gave this one five stars after reading all of the Man Booker shortlist books, apart from one, I'm still sort of chucking my way through 4321, I really wanted to pick up something light um, that I could sort of just fly through and really, really enjoy it. Although I did pick up Dark Matter and that was the case for me as well. Um, and so I read Lola and the Boy Next Door and this is by Stephanie Perkins. This is the second book in the Anna and the French Kiss series. Um, and I read Anna and the French Kiss a good a year and a half ago or something like that now. 
So I recently hauled this one um, and I was really looking forward to reading it. And I read it and it was great, it was a cute story. Um, the characters, it's, um, you don't need to have read the first book in order to read this one. Um, and I'm guessing the same is going to go for Anna and the, um, and the Happily Ever After. The characters from Anna and the French Kiss, do you, some of them do feature in this, but you're not really... I suppose you are spoiled for their story, but yeah, you don't have to read it if you don't want to. Um, but yeah, this was a really cutesy read, really fluffy read. Um, I flew through it, I thought it was really good, and ended up giving this one four stars. I wanted to complete a couple of my goals um, for 2017 that I'd set at the beginning of the year, one of which was to read six classics during uh, 2017. So I picked up and reread The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I've read this several times now and I've taught it to students as well. And I just really, really love Fitzgerald's writing. Um, he's got this way with descriptions that's brilliant, but also he can, he can really weave a story together. I haven't read any of his other longer novels, um, so if you've got some recommendations on where I should go next with Fitzgerald's writing, I'd really, really appreciate that. Um, because like I said, I've read The Great Gatsby several times and, and I've loved it every single time. Um, so I'm sure you know what this, this book is about, and I've got this really pretty, um, this is um, a vintage uh, classics edition of it, but it was um, exclusively designed for vintage by Tiffany & Co. Um, and it's yeah a really really nice nicely produced book and it's got these lovely end papers um, so yeah I bought this ages ago quite a few years ago now and thought I should really read the copy that I had on my shelf so yeah it was a really enjoyable experience again rereading that and I think I gave that one five stars as well the other goal that I completed in October was to read six non-fiction books during 2017 and I completed that with Between the World and Me by Tennessee Coates. This is a letter that Coates has written to his son where he talks about what it is to be black in America, his experience of being um, a black person in America. Um, he talks a lot about the history of, of black people in America um, and a lot, a lot of the politics behind it as well. I found this um, really interesting, really it's quite tough to read at times. Um, yeah, I've done a, um, a Goodreads review because after I finished reading this I was sort of finding it difficult to rate it. Um, how do you, I sort of think, well, how do you rate something that's the truth? How do you rate something that's somebody's personal experience? I found this to be quite negative overall. I didn't find there to be an awful lot of hope or positivity for the future. Um, and writing a letter to your son, I, I sort of thought that that should have been in there in some sort of sense. But I, I did found, find it quite negative. Um, yeah, but it was really hard for me to rate it. Like I said, I, I've written um, a review on Goodreads, which I'll link down below if you want to read that. I do think it's a really important read. Um, it was really interesting. I definitely recommend picking it up. It's quite short. It's about 150 pages. So um, it was not going to take up much of your time. But I think it, it's, def it's, so it's something that's important that you should read. Then it was the Autumn Readathon um, and I posted a TBR for that and I managed to read two books um, during that week kind of finishing off various other things as I was going. One of those was The Loney by Andrew Michael Hurley. This was one that I picked up a good few months ago now with the idea in mind that I would read it in October around Halloween time because it kind of had that gothic feel to it. And I'm glad I did pick it up during that time because I was right. It was for the um, gothic or spooky challenge, like read a book that's gothic or spooky. Um, and this definitely was gothic. This tells the story of two brothers um, sort of growing up in the 1970s in Britain. And their family takes them on holiday, or they go as a family on holiday to this place called the Loney quite often. And for the majority of the book, they go, they're going back to the Lonely and they've gone sort of as a big church group. So they've gone with their parents and with um, the local priest and then there are kind of some other people connected to the church as well. Um, 
and the Loney is a very isolated backwards place um, it's like no other place in Britain that I can really describe I don't, and I can't really I really know whereabouts in Britain it is probably not to be honest um, but it has a lot of lot of mystery to it and a lot of secrets to it um, and I really liked the descriptions of the bleakness of the place and the eeriness of the place um, when it came to the story it seemed to be I didn't know this going in but it was very much connected to the idea of religion religion was a big theme running through this uh, the idea of belief of placing your trust in a in a higher being but also um, a higher person in terms of like a priest and this idea of do priests have all the answers um, can you you know that, that sort of idea of you know they're just people after all um, yeah and there was a lot of lot of discussion about religion in here um, but there was it was much more about the mystery of this place and, and you know finding out its secrets and or not finding out its secrets as the case may be um, I quite like this I came across a discussion on Twitter where um, I can't remember who it was now but they were saying that they picked this up and then DNF'd it um, because they couldn't really get on with the writing and they just found it a little bit silly um, I quite enjoyed it in the end it wasn't like a really good read for me um, but I would definitely recommend it it won the Costa Book Award in 2015 and I can sort of see the reasons behind that not a particular favourite of mine but one that I did enjoy and I think I gave this 3.5 stars and then the last book that I read in October, and this again was for the Autumn Readathon, um, for the challenge to read a short story collection. I read The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and Six Other Stories by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This was the only short story collection I had on my shelves, so I kind of had to pick it up for that challenge. Um, but after reading The Great Gatsby, I was really intrigued about reading this. I've seen the film The Curious Case of Benjamin Button but never got around to reading the short story um, and I, I liked the con a collection. I found the um, title story to be quite short and sharp and I know that's what, what short stories are supposed to be but I think it's because I'd seen the film first and they'd kind of fleshed it out as this sort of two hour long narrative and you get it's very brief in here and I, it left me wanting an awful lot more a lot, a lot of I had a lot of questions and things like that that I really wanted to answer and of course um, you don't get them answered um, and then there are six other stories in here and they all focus around life in in 1920s America and I thought there was some very clever writing in here I really liked the light that it threw on that time period in America um, and I'm really really glad that I read it it didn't take me long to get through each story was about um, 20 or so pages something like that so I sort of was reading a short story every day during that week um, and I gave this one 3.5 stars in the end so there you go guys that was my October wrap up they were all of the books that I read in October like I said I had a really good reading month I was really pleased with how um, everything went I read a lot of five star books which was great um yeah i'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below what did you read in october that you would really recommend and have you read any of the books that i mentioned today thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye